It's time now for perspective. Expecting parents are used to the question, boy or girl? But in reality, those aren't the only two options. A small but significant proportion of babies are born with a combination of female and male biological characteristics. In the past, it was common practice to perform surgery on the genitalia of intersex babies to make them conform aesthetically to one gender. But growing numbers of activists are fighting to change that. I'm joined now by Ori Turner and their mother, Christina Turner, a parent-child intersex advocacy team. Thank you so much for being with us today. Now, Ori, uh, you are intersex. What does that mean to you? It means that I'm just like a little different than anyone, everyone else. And what for people who are watching who aren't familiar with the term, what is it to be intersex, scientifically speaking? It means you have XY and XX chromosomes. <laughs> It's 11.30 our time, so Ori's probably a little bit tired to be explaining. She's asking me just the basic definition of what it is to be intersex. Oh, um, it's being born bet in between genders. <laughs> being born with sex characteristics or chromosomes that don't match up with the typical male and female um, genders that we presume at birth. And being intersex isn't necessarily one thing. There are lots of different types of intersex conditions, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah. There's quite a few variations of intersex, and intersex people can identify as male, female, or non-binary, or intersex. Um, you know, everyone gets to choose their own label, per se. And Christina, how did you first discover that your baby was intersex? A fair few numbers of years ago now, I can see. <laughs> Um, I actually found out when Ori was seven weeks old. Um, I, whenever they were born, I had had some concerns and doctors had said there was normal swelling from birth and to not be concerned about that. But as time went on, I just had like a mother's intuition that something was, was different and unique. And um, upon a couple of medical appointments, they uh, diagnosed Ori as having partial androgen sensitivity syndrome and basically having an intersex variation. And luckily, Ori was born in 2007 during, you know, when we had had the internet for quite some time. So I was able to do research myself online and connect with um, the Intersex Society of North America, which is no longer active, but it was back then. I was able to connect with that organization and intersex people and read their stories and hear their stories and um, make different choices for Ori's future. And what at the time was the medical community suggesting you do about uh, Ori's condition? If anything, <laughs> at, at the time, the doctors that we were dealing with were suggesting that it would be best to do surgery um, and to uh, solidify a female gender for Ori. And Ori, how do you feel about the fact that your mum chose not to take that path? I feel really happy and grateful that she didn't choose surgery and I get to like choose like my own gender. And Ori, I know that you don't go uh, by the pronoun him. You also don't go by the pronoun her. You prefer, you prefer the pronoun they, there. Why is that? Why is it important to you that people address you as they, there? Because I just like, I don't know, I just like feel like that's fitting for me and it's different for everyone. And do you find that people are largely accepting of that decision? Do you find that sometimes people find it hard to get their heads around why you've made that decision? Yeah, sometimes people like don't understand. Some people are like really good at understanding and some people just like it's hard for them. And Christina, have you found that people you meet also have similar similar issues, adults you speak to? Um, I would say in 2020, it's a pretty progressive time. So, um, and I also would say uh, that because Ori is intersex, they, they identify as being intersex and transgender, but um, because they're intersex, they sort of get like a little bit more of a free pass. Um, I like in our experience, in our like lived experience as a family and an Ori's experience. Um, 
being intersex makes people automatically be a little bit more understanding. And um, it's really been eye-opening for us for what the transgender community goes through because they don't get that same grace. Now, for a long time in many parts of the world, including in the United States, uh, doctors, you referenced it a little earlier, doctor, doctors advise parents uh, to get surgery to make uh, the baby's genitalia conform uh, more with a specific gender, either female or male. Uh, that's something that you're very much against. Can you just explain why you're so against that? Um, because it's important that we respect the autonomy of all human beings, whether they're children or adults. And um, these surgeries that we're speaking of are not surgeries that are a medical necessity. These are purely cosmetic surgeries. So um, they're not necessary to save the child's life or sustain the child's life. And therefore, you're taking risks that don't need to be taken. And um, even when the arguments are made by medical professionals that there's like high statistics like 95% of these intersex people feel female. Um, you know, there's still 5% <laughs> that maybe don't. And when you do that surgery, you're making an irreversible decision that, you know, you can never go back on for that person. And I think that, you know, it, especially in 2020, um, as far as we come with understanding gender and sexuality and everything, that we should be giving this respect to people in their own journey in life. Um, we should really be giving the psychosocial and emotional support to families with intersex children that they need to be able to support their children and their mental health growing up. And some people do say that offering surgery uh, to parents with babies with intersex conditions saves those children as they grow up in adolescence from possibly embarrassing, difficult, challenging situations. Ori, what do you, what do you say to that argument? Um, like that you might get embarrassed in the locker room or no like I feel like everyone's different but like I wouldn't get embarrassed stuff <laughs> <laughs> I think that Ori's really confident in them mm -hmm. in themselves and being intersex so they might not be as embarrassed because they've been raised in a way where um it, their intersex variation has been very normalized as that oh it's just another way to be another way to exist and that's fine so I think for them it's hard to understand those arguments of you know wouldn't your child be embarrassed or whatnot because for them there's no shame in being intersex and I think that's really beautiful. I couldn't agree more. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you found a really supportive community, an intersex community online, this is back in 2007. Just how important has it been for you both to be able to speak with, connect with other intersex people on the internet? It's been very like great and I like to have, and I like to have people in my community that I can like talk to that are like, like me. Yeah, it, I would have to agree. It's been immensely important. And um, it's something that I really cultivated when Ori was a baby. I, I knew that because, you know, this isn't a journey that I've been through or an experience that I've been through in my life. I myself am not intersex. So I felt like it was really important that Ori had a community of people that had had their lived experience and that we had friends in that community so that they, as they grew, they could connect and turn to those people. So I feel like community support is essential. Ori and Christina Turner, I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to leave it there. Thank you both so much for taking the time to speak to us here on France 24 today. Yeah, thank you uh -huh. so much for thank having us. Thank you so much for having us. Our pleasure. Us. A reminder now of our top stories. A police officer injured during the attack on the US Capitol by Trump supporters dies from his injuries. That is the number of US cabinet officials resigning in protest continues to grow. Democrats pushing for the president to be removed from office immediately. And fresh calls for justice in Indonesia as the country frees a radical Islamist preacher with ties to the 2002 Bali nightclub bombings. Well, that's all we have time for right now. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned. Coming up next, the France 24 interview with Dr. Anthony Fauci.